We continue our celebration of Black History Month by shining the spotlight on a Canton native whose talent on the basketball court helped him make history. For your sides, Chris Fields has a story of the first black All-American in the NBA from right here in Mississippi. When you think the number 23 in the NBA, Michael Jordan may come to mind, but before Jordan, Roland Garrett wore the number 23 on his Chicago Bulls jersey. The six foot six John, born and raised in Canton, Mississippi, would score a spot in history books by becoming the first African American to play for three NBA teams, paving the way for future NBA stars of color. It was here in this gymnasium in Canton more than five decades ago. A young and vibrant Roland Garrett showed off his incredible on-court skills wearing jersey number 23. As soon as I walked in this door, it brought back all kinds of memories. And uh, I can think about all the games we used to have with the Jackson School, Lindir, Brinkley. Garrett, a 1968 graduate of Rogers High School, now known as Canton High, was part of the history-making 1967 team that won the school's first basketball championship. The 73-year-old says there was a lot of excitement and victories on the court, but off the court, there were a lot of obstacles and issues he and other black teammates faced in the late 60s living in Mississippi. We had some racial issues and we had some difficult times but we found a way to get through those things by sticking together and, and uh, gathering together. See, Garrett didn't let those challenges shift his focus nor his passion for the game. After graduating high school, he got the opportunity to play at Florida State University. His drive to be the best and unique dunking skills helped lead the Seminoles win against UCLA in 1972. They took dunking out of the game, so my whole four years at Florida State, I couldn't dunk. And that was a big part of my game. So I, I was angry. I was angry with Jabbar for four years because he's the reason they took Duncan out of the college game because he was so dominant. Garrett's basketball career then shifted to new heights after college. He was chosen by Chicago Bulls with the overall 78th pick in the 1972 NBA draft. Actually, Memphis had a team at the time. It was in the ABA. It was called the Memphis Towns. So I got drafted in the second round by Memphis. And I got drafted in the fifth round by Chicago. But by the time I got ready to go to Chicago, Memphis folded. So there goes my bargaining power. So I, I couldn't go to Chicago and say, well, if you don't give me what I want, I'm going to go to Memphis. So that took that away from me. So I had to go and negotiate with Chicago. Garrett says he landed in the Windy City with the mission to put Mississippi on the map and be an excellent ball player, even garnering praise from his coach, Dick Moda. In fact, he played on the team for many years before passing on the famous jersey number 23 to Michael Jordan to wear. I just kept trying to keep my number all through college. I just liked to say like 23, so I kept it. And luckily, no one had it. When, well, the guy that had it at, at Chicago was the guy that I beat out to make the team. So that's how I ended up with 23 at Chicago. Garrett was later traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers in 1975 and the Milwaukee Bucks in 1977. Every year you got to fight for your position. Mm. And at that time, it was only 17 teams in the NBA. About 240 players total, professional basketball players in the NBA. And you got to, you know, you got guys coming out of school, you got hundreds of guys coming out of school every year. Now, at 73 years old, Garrett still can't put the ball down. Tuesday, he spent much of his time showing off his hoop magic with members of the Nichols Middle School basketball team. It feel good knowing, knowing somebody who came to me to the NBA gave me hope that I can make it too. Learning how Garrett soared from Canton to the NBA motivates students like Jeremy Harris to strive and achieve their dreams. I never thought about it as me being a, a pioneer or anything. You know, that, that went along with it, but I, I just focused on playing basketball. I never thought about it in those, those terms until later on when I, when I started thinking about what had, what had taken place and the things that I had got awarded for. So it, it, was, it was a proud moment for me at that time. Now, after a successful career and making history, Garrett and his family started a chemical company. Garrett also teaches the game of basketball to young people with the lesson of achieving not only on the court, but academically. Chris Fields, three on your side.